Act One of Tis Pity She's a Whore. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Tis Pity She's a Whore by John Ford. Act One. Scene One. Friar Bonaventura's Cell. Enter Friar and Giovanni. Dispute no more in this. For no young man, these are no school points. Nice philosophy may tolerate unlikely arguments, but heaven admits no jest. Wits that presumed on wit too much, by striving how to prove there was no God, with foolish grounds of art, discovered first the nearest way to hell, and filled the world with devilish atheism. Such questions, youth, are fond. Far better tis to bless the sun than reason why it shines. Yet he thou talkest of is above the sun. No more, I may not hear it. Oh, gentle father, to you I have unclasped my burdened soul, emptied the storehouse of my thoughts and heart, made myself poor of secrets, have not left another word untold which hath not spoke all what I ever durst or think or know. And yet is here the comfort I shall have. Must I not do what all men else may? Love. Yes, you may love, fair son. Must I not praise that beauty which, if framed anew, the gods would make a gut of it if they had it there, and kneel to it, as I do kneel to them? Why, foolish madman? Shall a peevish sound, a customary form from man to man, of brother and of sister, be a bar twixt my perpetual happiness and me? Say that we have one father, say one womb cursed to my joys, gave both of us life and birth. Are we not therefore each to other bound, so much more by nature, by the links of blood, of reason? Nay, if you will have it, even of religion, to be ever one, one soul, one flesh, one love, one heart, one all. Have done, unhappy youth, for thou art lost. Shall then, for that I am her brother born, my joys be ever banished from her bed? No, father, in your eyes I see the change of pity and compassion from your age as from a sacred oracle distills the life of counsel tell me holy man what cure shall give me ease in these extremes repentant son and sorrow for this sin for thou hast moved a majesty above with thy unranged almost blasphemy oh. Do not speak of that, dear confessor. Art thou, my son, that miracle of wit, who once within these three months wert esteemed a wonder of thine age throughout Bononia? How did the university applaud thy government, behaviour, learning, speech, sweetness, and all that could make up a man? I was proud of my tutelage, and chose rather to leave my books than part with thee. I did so. But the fruits of all my hopes are lost in thee, as thou art in thyself. O oh, Giovanni, hast thou left the schools of knowledge to converse with lust and death? For death waits on thy lust. Look through the world, and thou shalt see a thousand faces shine more glorious than this idol thou adorest. Leave her, and take thy choice. Tis much less sin though in such games as those they lose that win it were more ease to stop the ocean from floats and ebbs than to dissuade my vows then i have done 
and in thy wilful flames already see thy ruin heaven is just yet hear my counsel as a voice of life hie to thy father's house there lock thee fast alone within thy chamber then fall down on both thy knees and grovel on the ground cry to thy heart wash every word thou utterest in tears and if be possible of blood beg heaven to cleanse the leprosy of lust that rots thy soul acknowledge what thou art a wretch a worm a nothing weep sigh pray three times a day and three times every night for seven days space do this then if thou finds no change in thy desires return to me i'll think on remedy pray for thyself at home whilst i pray for thee here away my blessing with thee we have need to pray all this i'll do to free me from the rod of vengeance else i'll swear my fates my god exeunt scene two the street before florio's house enter grimaldi and vasquez with their swords drawn come sir stand your tackling if you prove craven i'll make you run quickly thou art no equal match for me indeed i never went to the wars to bring home news nor i cannot play the mountebank for a meal's meat and swear i got my wounds in the field see you these gray hairs they'll not flinch for a bloody nose wilt thou to this gear why slave thinkest thou i'll balance my reputation with a cast suit call thy master he shall know that i dare scold like a cot queen that's your profession thou poor shadow of a soldier i will make thee know my master keeps servants thy better in quality and performance comest thou to fight or prate neither with thee i am a roman and a gentleman one that have got mine honour with expense of blood you are a lying coward and a fool fight or by these hilts i'll kill thee brave my lord you'll fight provoke me not for if thou dost have at you they fight grimaldi is worsted enter florio donado and soranzo from opposite sides what mean these sudden broils so near my doors have you not other places but my house to vent the spleen of your disordered bloods must i be haunted still with such unrest as not to eat or sleep in peace at home is this your love grimaldi fie tis not and vasquez i may tell thee tis not well to broach these quarrels you are ever forward in seconding contentions enter above annabella and putana what's the ground that with your patience seniors i'll resolve this gentleman whom fame reports a soldier for else i know not rivals me in love to signor florio's daughter to whose ears he still prefers his suit to my disgrace thinking the way to recommend himself is to disparage me in his report but no grimaldi though maybe thou art my equal in thy blood yet this bereaves a lowness in thy mind which wert thou noble thou wouldst as much disdain as i do thee for this unworthiness and on this ground i willed my servant to correct his tongue holding a man so base no match for me and had not your sudden coming prevented us i had let my gentleman blood under the gills i should have wormed you sir for running mad i'll be revenged soranzo on a dish of warm broth to stay your stomach do honest innocence do spoon meat is a wholesome diet than a spanish blade remember this exit i fear thee not grimaldi my lord soranzo this is strange to me why you should storm having my word engaged owning her heart what need you doubt her ear losers may talk by law of any game yet the villainy of words signor florio may be such as would make any unspleen dove choleric blame not my lord in this be you more silent 
I would not, for my wealth, my daughter's love should cause the spilling of one drop of blood. Vasquez, put up. Let's end this fray in wine. Exeunt. How like you this, child? His threatening, challenging, quarrelling, and fighting on every side, and all is for your sake. You had need look to yourself, charge. You'll be stolen away sleeping else shortly. But tutoress, such a life gives no content to me. My thoughts are fixed on other ends. Would you would leave me? Leave you? No marvel else. Leave me no leaving, charge. This is love outright. Indeed, I blame you not. You have choice fit for the best lady in Italy. Pray, do not talk so much. Take the worst with the best. There's Grimaldi the soldier, a very well-timbered fellow. They say he's a Roman, nephew to the Duke Montferrato. They say he did good service in the wars against the Milanese. But faith, charge, I do not like him, and be for nothing but for being a soldier. Not one amongst twenty of your skirmishing captains, but have some privy maim or other. That mars their standing upright. I like him the worse. He crinkles so much in the hams. Though he might serve if there were no more men, yet he's not the man I would choose. Fie how thou pratest! As I am a very woman, I like Signor Soranzo well. He is wise, and what is more, rich, and what is more than that, kind, and what is more than all this, a nobleman. Such a one were I the fair Annabella myself, I would wish and pray for. Then he is bountiful. Besides, he is handsome, and by my troth I think wholesome, and that's news in a gallant of three and twenty, liberal that I know, loving that you know, and a man sure, else he could never have purchased such a good name with Hippolyta, the lusty widow, in her husband's lifetime. And twere but for that report, sweetheart, would he were thine. Commend a man for his qualities, but take a husband as he is a plain, sufficient, naked man. Such a one is for your bed, and such a one is Signor Soranzo, my life for it. Sure, the woman took her morning's draught too soon. Enter Burghetto and Poggio. But look, sweetheart, look what thing comes now. Here's another of your ciphers to fill up the number. O oh, brave old ape in a silken coat, observe. Didst thou think, Poggio, that I would spoil my new clothes and leave my dinner to fight? No, sir. I did not take you for so errant a baby. I am wiser than so. For I hope, Poggio, thou never heardst of an elder brother that was a coxcomb. Didst, Poggio? Never indeed, sir. As long as they had either land or money left them to inherit. Is it possible, Poggio? Oh, monstrous! Why, I'll undertake with a handful of silver to buy a headful of wit at any time. But, sirrah, I have another purchase in hand. I shall have the wench, mine uncle says. I will but wash my face and shift socks and then have at her, e faith. Mark my pace, Poggio. Passes over the stage. Sir, Aside, I have seen an ass and a mule trot the Spanish pavin with a better grace. I know not how often. Following him. This idiot haunts me too. Aye, aye, he needs no description. The rich magnifico that is below with your father, charge, Signor Donato, his uncle, for that he means to make this, his cousin, a golden calf, thinks that she will be a right Israelite, and fall down to him presently. But I hope I have tutored you better. They say a fool's bauble is a lady's playfellow. Yet you, having wealth enough, you need not cast upon the dearth of flesh at any rate. Hang him, innocent. Giovanni passes over the stage. But see, Putana, see! What blessed shape of some celestial creature now appears! What man is he, that with such sad aspect walks careless of himself? Where? Look below. Oh, tis your brother, sweet! <laughs> tis your brother. Sure, tis not he. This is some woeful thing, wrapped up in grief. Some shadow of a man. Alas, he beats his breast and wipes his eyes, drowned all in tears. 
Methinks I hear him sigh. Let's down, Putana, and partake the cause. I know my brother and the love he bears me will not deny me partage in his sadness. Aside. My soul is full of heaviness and fear. Exit with Putana. Scene three. A hall in Florio's house. <laughs> lost. I am lost. My fates have doomed my death. The more I strive, I love. The more I love, the less I hope. I see my ruin certain. What judgment or endeavors could apply to my incurable and restless wounds? I thoroughly have examined, but in vain. Oh, that it were not in religion's sin to make our love a god and worship it. I have wearied heaven with prayers, dried up the spring of my continual tears. Even star my veins with daily fasts. What wit or art could counsel I have practiced? But alas, I find all these but dreams and old men's tales to fright unsteady youth. I am still the same, or I must speak or burst. Tis not I know my lust, but tis my fate that leads me on. Keep fear and low faint-hearted shame with slaves. I'll tell her that I love her, though my heart were rated at the price of that attempt. Oh, me, she comes. Enter Annabella and Putana. Brother. Aside. If such a thing as courage dwell in men, ye heavenly powers, now double all that virtue in my tongue. Why, brother, will you not speak to me? Yes. How do you, sister? Howe'er I am, methinks you are not well. Bless us. Why are you so sad, sir? Let me entreat you. Leave us a while, Putana. Sister, I would be private with you. Withdraw, Putana. I will. Aside. If this were any other company for her, I should think my absence an office of some credit. But I will leave them together. Exit. Come, sister. Lend me your hand. Let's walk together. I hope you need not blush to walk with me. Here's none but you and I. How's this? In faith, I mean no harm. Harm? No, good faith. How is it with thee? Aside. I trust you be not frantic. I am very well, brother. Trust me. But I am sick. I fear so sick will cost me my life. Mercy forbid it. Tis not so, I hope. I think you love me, sister. Yes, you know I do. I know it indeed. You are very fair. <laughs> Nay, then I see you have a merry sickness. That's as it proves. The poet's fane I read, that Juno for her forehead did exceed all other goddesses. But I durst swear your forehead exceeds hers, as hers did theirs. Jove, this is pretty. Oh, such a pair of stars as are thine eyes, would like Promethean fire. If gently glanced, give
give life to senseless stones. Fly upon you. The lily and the rose, most sweetly strange, Upon your dimpled cheeks do strive for change. Such lips would tempt a saint, Such hands as those would make an anchorite lascivious. Do you mock me or flatter me? Oh, if you would see a beauty more exact than art can counterfeit, or nature frame, look in your glass, and there behold your own. Oh, you are a trim youth. Here. Offers his dagger to her. What to do? And here's my breast. Strike home. Rip up my bosom. There thou shalt behold a heart in which is writ the truth I speak. Why stand you? Are you earnest? Yes, most earnest. You cannot love. Whom? My tortured soul hath felt affliction in the heat of death. Oh, Annabella, I am quite undone. The love of thee, my sister, and the view of thy immortal beauty have untuned all harmony both of my rest and life. Why do you not strike? Forbid it, my just fears. If this be true, twere fitter I were dead. True. Annabella, tis no time to jest. I have too long suppressed my hidden flames that almost have consumed me. I have spent many a silent night in sighs and groans, ran over all my thoughts, despised my fate, reasoned against the reasons of my love, done all that smooth-cheeked virtue could advise, but found all bootless. Tis my destiny that you must either love or I must die. Comes this in sadness from you? Let some mischief befall me soon if I dissemble aught. You are my brother, Giovanni. You, my sister Annabella. I know this, and could afford you instance why to love so much the more for this which intent wise nature first in your creation meant to make you mine, else it had been sin and foul to share one beauty to a double soul. Nearness in birth and blood doth but persuade a near nearness in affection. Oh, I have asked counsel of the holy church who tells me I may love you, and tis just that, since I may, I should, and will, yes, will. Must I now live, or die? Live. Thou hast won the field and never fought. What thou hast urged, my captive heart had long ago resolved. I blush to tell thee, but I'll tell thee now. For every sigh that thou hast spent for me, I have sighed ten. For every tear, shed twenty. And not so much for that I loved, as that I durst not say I loved, nor scarcely think it. 
Oh, let not this music be dream, ye gods. For pity's sake, I beg you. On my knees. She kneels. Brother, even by our mother's dust, I charge you. Do not betray me to your mirth or hate. Love me or kill me, brother. On my knees. He kneels. Sister, even by my mother's dust I charge you, do not betray me to your mirth or hate. Love me or kill me, sister. You mean good sooth, then? In good troth I do, and so do you, I hope. Say, I'm in earnest. I'll swear it, I. And I, and by this kiss. Kisses her. Once more, yet once more. Now let's rise. They rise. By this, I would not change this minute for Elysium. What must we now do? What you will. Come then, after so many tears as we have wept, let's learn to court in smiles, to kiss and sleep. Exeunt. Scene four. A street. Enter Florio and Donado. Signor Donado, you have said enough. I understand you. But would have you know, I will not force my daughter against her will. You see, I have but two, a son and her, and he is so devoted to his book, as I must tell you true, I doubt his health. Should he miscarry, all my hopes rely upon my girl. As for worldly fortune, I am, I thank my stars, blessed with enough. My care is how to match her to her liking. I would not have her marry wealth, but love. And if she like your nephew, let him have her. Here's all that I can say. Sir, you say well, like a true father. And, for my part, I, if the young folks can like, Twixt you and me, will promise to assure my nephew presently three thousand florins yearly during life, and after I am dead, my whole estate. Tis a fair proffer, sir. Meantime, your nephew shall have free passage to commence his suit. If he can thrive, he shall have my consent. So, for this time, I'll leave you, signor. Exit. Well, here's hope yet, if my nephew would have wit, but he is such another dunce, I fear. He'll never win the wench. When I was young, I could have done it. If faith, and so shall he, if he will learn of me, and in good time, he comes himself. Enter Burghetto and Poggio. How now, Burghetto? Whither away so fast? Oh, uncle! I have heard the strangest news that ever came out of the mint. Have I not, Poggio? Yes, indeed, sir. What news, Burghetto? Why, look ye, uncle. My barber told me just now that there is a fellow come to town who undertakes to make a mill go without the mortal help of any water or wind, only with sandbags. And this fellow hath a strange horse, a most excellent beast, I'll assure you, uncle, my barber says, whose head, to the wonder of all Christian people, stands just behind where his tail is. It's not true, Poggio? So the barber swore forsooth. And you are running thither? I forsooth, uncle. Wilt thou be a fool still? Come, sir. You shall not go. You have more mind of a puppet play than on the business I told you. Why, thou great baby, wilt never have wit? Wilt make thyself a may game to all the world? Answer for yourself, master. Why, uncle, should I sit at home still 
and not go abroad and see fashions like other gallants to see hobby horses what wise talk i pray had you with annabella when you were at signor florio's house oh the wench i'd say me uncle i tickled her with a rare speech that i made her almost burst her belly with laughing nay i think so and what speech was it what did i say poggio forsooth my master said that he loved her almost as well as he loved parmesan and swore i'll be sworn for him that she wanted but such a nose as he was to be as pretty a young woman as any was in parma oh gross nay uncle then she asked me whether my father had more children than myself and i said no twere better he should have had his brains knocked out first this is intolerable then said she will signor donado your uncle leave you all his wealth ha that was good did she harp upon that string did she harp upon that string ay that she did i answered leave me all his wealth why woman he hath no other wit if he had he should hear on it to his everlasting glory and confusion i know quoth i i am his white boy and will not be gulled and with that she fell into a great smile and went away nay i did fit her ah sirrah then i see there's no changing of nature well burghetto i fear thou wilt be a very ass still i should be sorry for that uncle come come you home with me since you are no better a speaker i'll have you write to her after some courtly manner and enclose some rich jewel in the letter ay marry that will be excellent peace innocent once in my time i'll set my wits to school if all fail tis but the fortune of a fool poggio twill do poggio excellent end of act one Act Two of Tis Pity She's a Whore. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Tis Pity She's a Whore by John Ford. Act Two. Scene One. An apartment in Florio's house. Enter Giovanni and Annabella. Oh, come, Annabella. No more sister now, but love. A name more gracious. Oh, do not blush, beauty, sweet wonder, but be proud to know that yielding thou hast conquered and inflamed a heart whose tribute is thy brother's life. And mine is his. Oh, how these stolen contents would print a modest crimson on my cheeks, had any but my heart's delight prevailed i marvel why the chaster of your sex should think this pretty toy called maidenhead so strange a loss when being lost tis nothing and you are still the same tis well for you now you can talk music as well consists in the ear as in the playing oh you are wanton tell aunt you were best do thou wilt chide me then kiss me so thus hung jove on leda's neck and sucked divine ambrosia from her lips i envy not the mightiest man alive but hold myself in being king of thee more great than were i king of all the world but i shall lose you sweetheart but you shall not you must be married mistress yes to whom someone must have you you must nay some other now prithee do not speak so without jesting you'll make me weep in earnest 
What? You will not. But tell me, sweet, canst thou be dared to swear that thou wilt live to me and to no other? By both our loves I dare. For didst thou know, my Giovanni, how all suitors seem to my eyes hateful, thou wouldst trust me then. Enough, I take thy word. Sweet, we must part. Remember what thou vowest. Keep well my heart. Will you be gone? I must. When to return? Soon. Look, you do. Farewell. Exit. Go where thou wilt. In mind I'll keep thee here. And where thou art, I know I shall be there. Guardian. Enter Putana. Child, how is child? Well, thank heaven, huh? Oh, guardian, what a paradise of joy have I passed over. Nay, what a paradise of joy have you passed under? Why, now I commend thee, charge. Fear nothing, sweetheart. What though he be your brother? Your brother's a man, I hope. And I say still, if a young wench feel the fit upon her, let her take any body, father or brother, all is one. I would not have it known for all the world. Nor I, indeed, for the speech of the people, else twere nothing. Within. Daughter, Annabella. Oh, me, my father. Here, sir. Reach my work. Within. What are you doing? So, let him come now. Enter Florio, followed by Riccardetto, as a doctor of physics, and Philotis with a lute. So hard at work. That's well. You lose no time. Look, I have brought you company. Here's one, a learned doctor, lately come from Padua, much skilled in physic, and, for that I see you have of late been sickly, I entreated this reverend man to visit you some time. You are very welcome, sir. I thank you, mistress. Loud fame in large report hath spoke your praise, as well for virtue as perfection for which I have been bold to bring with me a kinswoman of mine, a maid, for song and music, one perhaps will give content, please you to know her. They are parts I love, and she for them most welcome. Thank you, lady. Sir, now you know my house, pray make not strange, and if you find my daughter need your art, I'll be your paymaster. Sir, what I am, she shall command. You shall bind me to you. Daughter, I must have conference with you about some matters that concern us both. Good master doctor, please you but walk in. We'll crave a little of your cousin's cunning. I think my girl hath not quite forgot to touch an instrument. She could have done it. We'll hear them both. I'll. Wait upon you, sir. Exeunt. Scene two. A room in Soranzo's house. Enter Soranzo with a book. Love's measure is extreme, the comfort pain, the life unrest and the reward disdain. What's here? Looked o'er again, tis so, so writes this smoothly sensuous poet in his rhymes. But, Sanazar, thou liest, for had thy bosom felt such oppression as is laid on mine, thou wouldst have kissed the rod that made thee smart. To work, then, happy muse, and contradict what Sanazar hath in his envy writ. Writes. Love's measure is the mean, sweet his a noise, his pleasures life, and his reward all joys. Had Annabella lived when Sanazar did in his brief encomium celebrate Venice, that queen of cities, he had left that verse which gained him such a sum of gold, and for one only look from Annabelle had rid of her and her diviner cheeks. Oh, how my thoughts are! Within. Pray, forbear. In rules of civility let me give notice on't. I shall be taxed of my neglect of duty and service. What rude intrusion interrupts my peace? Can I be nowhere private? Within. Troth you wrong, your modesty. 
What's the matter, Vasquez? Who is? Enter Hippolyta and Vasquez. Tis I. Do you know me now? Look, perjured man, on her whom thou and thy distracted lust have wronged. Thy sensual rage of blood hath made my youth a scorn to men and angels. And shall I be now a foil to thy unsated change? Thou know'st, false wanton, when my modest fame stood free from stain or scandal, all the charms of hell or sorcery could not prevail against the honour of my chaster bosom. Thine eyes did plead in tears, thy tongue in oaths, such and so many that a heart of steel would have been wrought to pity, as was mine. And shall the conquest of my lawful bed, my husband's death, urged on by his disgrace, my loss of womanhood, be ill rewarded with hatred and contempt? No. No, Sir Ronzo, I have a spirit doth as much distaste the slavery of fearing thee, as thou dost loathe the memory of what hath passed. Nay, dear Ippolita. Call me not dear, nor think with supple words to smooth the grossness of my abuses. Tis not your new mistress, your goodly madam merchant, shall triumph on my dejection. Tell her thus from me, my birth was nobler, and by much more free. You are too violent. You are too double in your dissimulation. Seest thou this, this habit, these black morning weeds of care? Tis thou art cause of this, and hast divorced my husband from his life, and me from him, and made me widow in my widowhood. Will you yet hear? More of thy perjuries? Thy soul is drowned too deeply in those sins. Thou needst not add to the number. Then I'll leave you. You are past all rules of sense. And thou of grace. Fie, mistress, you are not near the limits of reason. If my lord had a resolution as noble as virtue itself, you take the course to unedge it all. Sir, I beseech you, do not perplex her. Griefs, alas, will have a vent. I dare undertake Madame Hippolyta will now freely hear you. Talk to a woman frantic. Are these the fruits of your love? They are the fruits of thy untruth, false man. Didst thou not swear, whilst yet my husband lived, that thou wouldst wish no happiness on earth more than to call me wife? Didst thou not vow, when he should die, to marry me? For which the devil in my blood and thy protests caused me to counsel him to undertake a voyage to Ligorne, for that we heard his brother there was dead, and left a daughter young and unfriended, whom with much ado I wished him to bring hither. He did so, and went and as thou knowest, died on the way. Unhappy man, to buy his death so dear with my advice! Yet thou, for whom I did it, forgets thy vows, and leavest me to my shame. Who could help this? Who? Perjured man! Thou couldst, if thou hadst faith or love. You are deceived. The vows I made, if you remember well, were wicked and unlawful. Twere more sin to keep them than to break em, as for me, I cannot mask my penitence. Think thou how much thou hast digressed from honest shame in bringing of a gentleman to death, who was thy husband, such a one as he, so noble in his quality condition, learning, behaviour, entertainment, love, as Parma could not show a braver man. You do not well, this was not your promise. I care not, let her know her monstrous life, ere I'll be servile to so black a sin. I'll be a curse. Women come here no more. Learn to repent and die, for by my honour I hate thee and thy lust. You have been too foul. Exit. Aside. This part has been scurvily played. How foolishly this beast condemns his fate, and shuns the use of that which I more scorn than I once loved, his love. But let him go. My vengeance shall give comfort to his woe. Going. Mistress, mistress, Madame Hippolyta, pray a word or two. With me, sir? With you, if you please. What is't? I know you are infinitely moved now, and you think you have cause. Some, I confess, you have, but sure not so much as you imagine. Indeed. Oh, you were miserably bitter, which you followed even to the last syllable. Faith, you were somewhat too shrewd. By my life, you could not have took my lord in a worse time since I first knew him. Tomorrow you shall find him a new man. Well, I shall wait his leisure. 
Fine, this is not a hearty patience. It comes sourly from you. Troth, let me persuade you for once. Aside. I have it, and it shall be so. Thanks, opportunity. Persuade me? To what? Visit him in some milder temper. Oh, if you could but master a little your female spleen, how might you win him? He will never love me. Vasquez, thou hast been a too trusty servant to such a master, and I believe thy reward in the end will fall out like mine. So perhaps too. Resolve thyself, it will. Had I one so true, so truly honest, so secret to my counsels, as thou hast been to him and his, I should think it a slight acquittance, not only to make him master of all I have, but even of myself. Oh, you are a noble gentlewoman. Wilt thou feed always upon hopes? Well, I know thou art wise, and seest the reward of an old servant daily what it is. Beggary and neglect. True. But, Vasquez, wert thou mine, and wouldst be private to me and my designs, I here protest, myself and all what I can else call mine, should be at thy dispose. Aside. Work you that way, old mole? Then I have the wind of you. I were not worthy of it by any desert that could lie within my compass. If I could. What then? I should then hope to live in these my old years with rest and security. Give me thy hand. Now promise but thy silence, and help to bring to a pass a plot I have. And here, in sight of heaven, that being done, I make thee lord of me and mine estate. Come, you are merry. This is such a happiness that I can neither think nor believe. Promise thy secrecy, and tis confirmed. Then here I call our good genie for witness. Whatsoever your designs are, or against whomsoever, I will not only be a special actor therein, but never disclose it till it be effected. I take thy word. And with that, thee for mine. Come then, let's more confer of this anon. Aside. On this delicious bane my thought shall banquet. Revenge shall sweeten what my griefs have tasted. Exit with Vasquez. Scene three. The street. Enter Ricardetto and Philotis. Thou seest, my lovely niece, these strange mishaps, how all my fortunes turn to my disgrace, wherein I am but as a looker-on, whilst others act my shame, and I am silent. But, uncle, wherein can this borrowed shape give you content? I'll tell thee, gentle niece, thy wanton aunt, in her lascivious riots, lives now secure, thinks I am surely dead, in my late journey to Lignorne for you, as I have caused it to be rumoured out. Now would I see with what an impudence she gives scope to her loose adultery, and how the common voice allows hereof. Thus far I have prevailed. Alas, I fear you mean some strange revenge. Oh, be not troubled. Your ignorance shall plead for you in all. But to our business. What? You learned for certain how Signor Florio means to give his daughter in marriage to Soranzo? Yes, for certain. But how find you young Annabella's love inclined to him? For aught I could perceive, she neither fancies him nor any else. There is mystery in that, which time must show. She used you kindly? Yes. And craved your company? Often. Tis well. It goes as I could wish. I am the doctor now, and as for you, none knows you. If all fail not, we shall thrive. But who comes here? I know him. Tis Grimaldi, a Roman and a soldier, near allied unto the Duke of Montferrato, one attending on the nuncio of the Pope, that now resides in Parma, by which means he hopes to get the love of Annabella. Enter Grimaldi. Save you, sir. And 
you sir i have heard of your approved skill which through the city is freely talked of and would crave your aid for what sir marry sir for this but i would speak in private leave us cousin philosus retires i love fair annabella and would know whether in arts there may not be receipts to move affection sir perhaps there may but these will nothing profit you not me unless i be mistook you are a man greatly in favour with the cardinal what of that in duty to his grace i will be bold to tell you if you seek to marry florio's daughter you must first remove a bar twixt you and her who's that soranzo is the man that hath her heart and while he lives be sure you cannot speed soranzo what mine enemy is it he is he your enemy the man i hate worse than confusion i will tell him straight nay then take my advice even for his grace's sake the cardinal i'll find a time when he and she do meet of which i'll give you notice and to be sure he shall not scape you i'll provide a poison to dip your rapier's point in if he had as many heads as hydra had he dies but shall i trust thee doctor as yourself doubt not in aught exit grimaldi thus shall the fates decree by me soranzo falls that ruined me exeunt scene four another part of the street enter donado with a letter baghetto and poggio well sir i must be content to be both your secretary and your messenger myself i cannot tell what this letter may work but as sure as i am alive if thou come once to talk with her i fear thou wilt mar whatsoever i make you make uncle why am not i big enough to carry mine own letter i pray ay ay carry a fool's head of thy own why thou dunce wouldst thou write a letter and carry it thyself yes that i would and read it to her with mine own mouth for you must think if she will not believe me myself when she hears me speak she will not believe another's handwriting oh you think i am a blockhead uncle no sir poggio knows i have indited a letter myself so i have yes truly sir i have it in my pocket a sweet one no doubt pray let's see it i cannot read my own hand very well poggio read it poggio begin reads most dainty and honey-sweet mistress i could call you fair and lie as fast as any that loves you but my uncle being the elder man i leave it to him as more fit for his age and the colour of his beard i am wise enough to tell you that i can board where i see occasion or if you like my uncle's wit better than mine you shall marry me if you like mine better than his i will marry you in spite of your teeth so commending my best parts to you i rest yours upwards and downwards or you may choose burghetto ah here's stuff uncle here's stuff indeed to shame us all pray whose advice did you take in this learned letter none upon my word but mine own and mine uncle believe it nobody else's twas mine own brain i thank a good wit for it get you home sir and look you keep within doors till i return how that were a jest indeed i scorn it faith what you do not judge me but i do now indeed sir tis very unhealthy well sir if i hear any of your apish running to motions and foperies till i come back you were as good not 
Look to it. Exit. Poggio, shall us steal and see this horse with the head in its tail? Aye, but you must take heed of whipping. Dost take me for a child, Poggio? Come, honest Poggio. Exeunt. Scene 5. Friar Bonaventura's cell. Enter Friar and Giovanni. Peace! Thou hast told a tale whose every word threatens eternal slaughter to the soul. I'm sorry to have heard it. Would mine ears have been one minute deaf before the hour that thou camest to me? O oh, young man, cast away by the religious number of mine order, I day and night have waked my aged eyes above my strength to weep on thy behalf. But heaven is angry, and be thou resolved. Thou art a man remarked to taste a mischief. Look for it, though it come late, it will come sure. Father, in this you are uncharitable. What I have done, I'll prove both fit and good. It is a principle which you have taught, when I was yet your scholar, that the frame and composition of the mind doth follow the frame and composition of the body. So, where the body's furniture is beauty, the mind's must needs be virtue, which allowed virtue itself is reason but refined, and love the quintessence of that. This proves my sister's beauty, being rarely fair, is rarely virtuous. Chiefly in her love, and chiefly in that love, her love to me. If hers to me, then so is mine to her, since in like causes are effects alike. O oh, ignorance in knowledge! Long ago, how often have I warned thee this before? Indeed, if we were sure there were no deity, nor heaven nor hell, then to be led alone by nature's light, as were philosophers of elder times, might instance some defence. But tis not so. Then, madman, thou wilt find that nature is in heaven's positions blind. Your age overrules you. Had you youth like mine, you'd make her love your heaven, and her divine. Nay, then I see thou art too far sold to hell. It lies not in the compass of my prayers to call thee back. Yet let me counsel thee. Persuade thy sister to some marriage. Marriage? Why, that's to damn her. That's to prove her greedy of variety of lust. O oh, fearful! If thou wilt not, give me leave to shrive her, lest she should die unabsolved. At your best leisure, father. Then she'll tell you how dearly she doth prize my matchless love. Then you will know what pity twere we two should have been sundered from each other's arms. View well her face, and in that little round you may observe a world's variety. For colors lips, for sweet perfumes her breath, for jewels eyes, for threads of purest gold hair, for delicious choice of flowers cheeks. Wonder in every portion of that throne. Hear her but speak, and you will swear the spheres make music to the citizens in heaven. But, Father, what is else but pleasure framed, lest I offend your ears, shall go unnamed? The more I hear, I pity thee the more that one so excellent should give those parts all to a second death. What I can do is but to pray, and yet I could advise thee wouldst thou be ruled. In what? Why leave her yet? The throne of mercy is above your trespass. 
yet time is left you both to embrace each other else let all time be struck quite out of number she is like me and i like her resolved no more i'll visit her this grieves me most things being thus a pair of souls are lost exeunt scene six a room in florio's house enter florio donado annabella and putana where is giovanni newly walked abroad and as i heard him say gone to the friar his reverend tutor that's a blessed man a man made up of holiness i hope he'll teach him how to gain another world fair gentlewoman here's a letter sent to you from my young cousin i dare swear he loves you in his soul would you could hear sometimes what i see daily sighs and tears as if his breast were prison to his heart receive it annabella alas good man takes the letter what's that she said and please you sir she said alas good man truly i do commend him to her every night before her first sleep because i would have her dream of him and she hearkens to that most religiously say it so god a mercy putana there is something for thee gives her money and prithee do what thou canst on his behalf it shall not be lost labour take my word for it thank you most heartily sir now i have a feeling of your mind let me alone to work guardian did you call keep this letter signor florio in any case bid her read it instantly keep it for what pray read it me here right <sighs> i shall sir she reads the letter how do you find her inclined signor troth sir i know not how not all so well as i could wish sir i am bound to rest your cousin's debtor the jewel i'll return for if he love i'll count that love a jewel mark you that nay keep them both sweet maid you must excuse me indeed i will not keep it where is the ring that which your mother in her will bequeathed and charged you on her blessing not to give it to any but your husband send back that i have it not ah have it not where is it my brother in the morning took it from me said he would wear it to-day well what do you say to young bergetto's love are you content to match with him speak there is the point indeed aside what shall i do i must say something now what say why do you not speak sir with your leave please you to give me freedom yes you have it signor donato if your nephew mean to raise his better fortunes in his match the hope of me will hinder such a hope sir if you love him as i know you do find one more worthy of his choice than me in short i'm sure i shall not be his wife why here's plain dealing i commend thee for it and all the worst i wish thee is heaven bless thee your father yet and i will still be friends shall we not signor florio yes why not look here your cousin comes Enter Baghetto and Poggio. Oh, coxcomb, what doth he make here? Where is my uncle, sirs? What is the news now? Save you, uncle, save you. You must not think I come for nothing, masters. And how? How is it? What? You have read my letter? Ah, there I tickles you, he faith. But twere better you had tickled her in another place. Sirrah, sweetheart, I'll tell thee a good jest, and riddle what it is. You say you'll tell me. As I was walking just now in the street, I met a swaggering fellow who would needs take the wall of me. And because he did thrust me, I very valiantly called him rogue. He hereupon bade me draw i told him i had more wit than so but when he saw that i would not 
he did so maul me with the hilts of his rapier that my head sung whilst my feet capered in the kennel was ever the like ass seen and what did you all this while laugh at him for a gull till i saw the blood run about mine ears and then i could not choose but find in my heart to cry till a fellow with a broad beard they say he's a new-come doctor called me into his house and gave me a plaster look you here it is and sir there was a young wench washed my face and hands most excellently e faith i shall love her as long as i live for it did she not poggio yes and kissed him too why la now you think i tell a lie uncle i warrant would he that beat thy blood out of thy head had beaten some wit into it for i fear thou never wilt have any oh uncle but there was a wench would have done a man's heart good to have looked on her by this light she had a face methinks worth twenty of you mistress annabella was ever such a fool born i'm glad she liked you sir are you so by my troth i thank you forsooth sure it was the doctor's niece that was last day with us here twas she twas she how do you know that simplicity why does he not say so if i should have said no i should have given him the lie uncle and so have deserved a dry beating again all none of that a very modest well-behaved young maid as i have seen is she indeed indeed she is if i have any judgment well sir now you are free you need not care for sending letters now you are dismissed your mistress here will none of you no why what care i for that i can have wenches enough in parma for half a crown apiece can i not poggio i'll warrant you sir signor florio i thank you for your free recourse you gave for my admittance and to you fair maid that jewel i will give you against your marriage come will you go sir i marry will i mistress farewell mistress i'll come again to-morrow farewell mistress exhort donado baghetto and poggio enter giovanni son where have you been what alone alone still i would not have it so you must forsake this overbookish humour well your sister hath shook the fool off twas no match for her twas not indeed i meant it nothing less saranzo is the man i only like look on him annabella come tis supper-time and it grows late exit whose jewel's that some sweethearts uh, so i think a lusty youth signor donato gave it me to wear against my marriage but you shall not wear it send it back again what are you jealous that you shall know anon at greater leisure welcome sweet night the evening crowns the day Exeunt. end of act two tis pity she's a whore by john ford act three scene one a room in donado's house enter burghetto and poggio does my uncle think to make me a baby still no poggio he shall know i have a sconce now ay let him not bob you off like an ape with an apple sfoot i will have the wench if he were ten uncles in despite of his nose poggio hold him to the grindstone and give not a jot of ground she hath in a manner promised you already true poggio and her uncle the doctor swore i should marry her he swore i remember and i will have her that's more 
did see the codpiece point she gave me, and the box of marmalade. Very well, and kissed you that my chops were watered at the sight on. There is no way but to clap up a marriage in hugger mugger. I will do it, for I tell thee, Poggio, I begin to grow valiant, methinks, and my courage begins to rise. Should you be afraid of your uncle? Hang him, old doting rascal. No, I say I will have her. Lose no time, then. I will beget a race of wise men and constables that shall cart whores at their own charges, and break the duke's peace ere I have done myself. Come away. Exeunt. Scene 2. A room in Florio's house. Enter Florio, Giovanni, Soranzo, Annabella, Putana, and Vasquez. My lord Soranzo, though I must confess the proffers that are made me have been great in marriage of my daughter, yet the hope of your still rising honours has prevailed above all other jointures. Here she is. She knows my mind. Speak for yourself to her. And here you, daughter, see you use him nobly. For any private speech I'll give you time. Come, son, and you, the rest, let them alone. Agree they as they may. I thank you, sir. Aside to Annabella. Sister, be not a woman. Think on me. Vasquez? My lord. Attend me without. Exhort all but Soranzo and Annabella. Sir, what's your will with me? Do you not know what I should tell you? Yes. You'll say you love me. And I will swear it too, will you believe it? Tis no point of faith. Enter Giovanni in the gallery above. Have you not will to love? Not you. Whom then? That's as the fates infer. Of those I'm regent now. What mean you, sweet? To live and die a maid. Oh, that's unfit. Here is one can say that's but a woman's note. Did you but see my heart, then would you swear? That you were dead. That's true, or somewhat near it. See you this true love's tears? No. Now she winks. They plead to you for grace. Yet nothing speak. O oh, grant my suit. What is't? To let me leave. Take it. Still yours. That is not mine to give. One such another word would kill his hopes. Mistress, to leave those fruitless strifes of wit, know I have loved you long, and loved you truly. Not hope of what you have, but what you are hath drawn me on. Then let me not in vain still feel the rigour of your chaste disdain. I'm sick, and sick to the heart. Help, Aquavite! What mean you? Why, I thought you had been sick. Do you mock my love? There, sir, she is too nimble. Aside. Tis plain she laughs at me. These scornful taunts neither become your modesty or years. You are no looking-glass, or if you were, I would dress my language by you. I am confirmed. To put you out of doubt, my lord, methinks your common sense should make you understand that if I loved you, or desired your love, some way I should have given you better taste. But since you are a nobleman, and one I would not wish should spend his youth in hopes, let me advise you to forbear your suit, and think I wish you well, I tell you this. Is do you speak this? Yes, I myself. Yet no, thus far I give you comfort. If mine eyes could have picked out a man amongst all those that sued to me to make a husband of, you should have been that man. Let this suffice. Be noble in your secrecy and wise. Why now? I see she loves me. One word more. As ever virtue lived within your mind, as ever noble courses were your guide, as ever you would have me know you loved me, 
Let not my father know hereof by you. If I hereafter find that I must marry, it shall be you or none. I take that promise. Oh, oh, my head. What's the matter, not well? Oh, I begin to sicken. Heaven forbid! Exit from above. Help, help, within here, ho! Enter Florio, Giovanni, and Putana. Look to your daughter, Signor Florio. Hold her up, she swoons. S sister, how do you? Sick. Brother, are you there? Convey her to bed instantly, whilst I send for a physician. Quickly, I say. Alas, poor child. Exhaunt all but Soranzo. Re-enter Vasquez. My lord. O oh, Vasquez, now I doubly am undone, both in my present and my future hopes. She plainly told me that she could not love, and thereupon soon sickened, and I fear her life's in danger. Aside. By your lady, sir, and so is yours if you knew all. Last, sir, I am sorry for that. Maybe tis but a maid's sickness, an overflux of youth, and then, sir, there is no such present remedy as present marriage. But hath she given you an absolute denial? She hath, and she hath not. I'm full of grief, but what she said I'll tell thee as we go. Exeunt. Scene three. Another room in the same. Enter Giovanni and Putana. Oh, sir, we are all undone, quite undone, utterly undone, and shamed for ever. Your sister, oh, your sister! What of her? For heaven's sake, speak! How does she? Oh, that ever I was born to see this day! She is not dead, huh? Is she? Dead? No, she is quick. Tis worse. She is with child. You know what you have done. Heaven forgive you. Tis too late to repent now. Heaven help us. With child? How dost thou know it? How do I know it? Am I at these years ignorant what the meanings of qualms and water, pangs be? Of changing of colours, queasiness of stomachs, pukings, and another thing that I could name. Do not, for her and your credit's sake, spend the time in asking how and which way tis so. She is quick, upon my word. If you let a physician see her water, you are undone. But in what case is she? Prettily amended. Twas but a fit which I soon espied, and she must look for often henceforward. Commend me to her. Bid her take no care. Let not the doctor visit her, I charge you. Make some excuse till I return. Oh, me. I have a world of business in my head. Do not discomfort her. How do these news perplex me? If my father come to her, tell him she's recovered well. Sage was but some ill diet. Do you hear, woman? Look you to it. I will, sir. Exeunt. Scene four. Another room in the same. Enter Florio and Riccardetto. And how do you find her, sir? Indifferent well. I see no danger. Scarce perceive she's sick. But that she told me she had lately eaten melons, and, as she thought, those disagreed with her young stomach. Did you give her aught? An easy surfeit water, nothing else. You need not doubt her health. I rather think her sickness is a <clears throat> fullness of her blood. You understand me? I do. You counsel well, and once within these few days will so order it. She shall be married ere she know the time. Yet let not haste, sir, make unworthy choice. That were dishonour. Master doctor, no. I will not do so neither. In plain words, my lord Soranzo is the man I mean. A noble and a virtuous gentleman as any is in Parma. Not far hence dwells Father Bonaventure, a grave friar. 
once tutor to my son. Now at his cell I'll have them married. You have plotted wisely. I'll send one straight to speak with him to-night. Soranzo's wise. He will delay no time. It shall be so. Enter Friar and Giovanni. Good peace be here, and love. Welcome, religious friar. You are one that still bring blessing to the place you come to. Sir, with what speed I could, I did my best to draw this holy man from forth his cell to visit my sick sister, that with words of ghostly comfort in this time of need he might absolve her, whether she live or die. "'Twas well done, Giovanni. Thou herein hast showed a Christian's care, a brother's love. Come, father, I'll conduct you to her chamber, and one thing would entreat you. Say on, sir. I have a father's dear impression, and wish, before I fall into my grave, that I might see her married as tis fit. A word from you, grave man, will win her more than all our best persuasions. Gentle sir, all this I'll say, that heaven may prosper her. Exeunt. Scene five. A room in Riccardetto's house. Enter Grimaldi. Now, if the doctor keep his word, Soranzo, twenty to one you miss your bride. I know tis an unhobel act, and not becomes a soldier's valor, but in terms of love, where merit cannot sway, policy must. I am resolved, if this physician play not on both hands, then Soranzo falls. Enter Riccardetto. You are come, as I could wish. This very night, Soranzo, tis ordained, must be affied to Annabella, and, for aught I know, married. How? Yet your patience. The place, tis Friar Bonaventure's cell. Now I would wish you to bestow this night in watching thereabouts. Tis but a night. If you miss now, tomorrow I'll know all. Have you the poison? Here it is, in this box. Doubt nothing, this will do it. In any case, as you respect your life, be quick and sure. I'll speed him. Do. Away, for tis not safe you should be seen much here. Ever my love. And mine to you. Exit. So, if this hit... Ah, laugh and hug revenge, and they that now dream of a wedding feast may chance to mourn the lusty bridegroom's ruin. But to my other business, niece Philotus. Enter Philotus. Uncle. My lovely niece, you have bethought you? Yes, and as you counselled, fashioned my heart to love him. But he swears he will to-night be married, for he fears his uncle else. If he should know the drift, will hinder all and cause his curse to shrift. To-night? Why, best of all. But let me see, I... Ha! Yes, so it shall be. In disguise will early to the friars. I have thought on it. Uncle, he comes. Enter Bergetto and Poggio. Welcome, my worthy cuz. Lass, pretty lass, come bus, lass. Aha, Poggio. Kisses her. Aside. There's hope of this yet. You shall have time enough. Withdraw a little. We must confer at large. Have you not sweetmeats or dainty devices for me? You shall have enough, sweetheart. Sweetheart? Mark that, Poggio. By my troth, I cannot choose but kiss thee once more for that word, sweetheart. Poggio, I have a monstrous swelling about my stomach. Whatsoever the matter be. You shall have physic for it, sir. Time runs apace. Time's a blockhead. 
be ruled. When we have done what's fit to do, then you may kiss your fill and bed her too. Exeunt. Scene six. Florio's house. Annabella's chamber. A table with wax lights. Annabella at confession before the friar. She weeps and wrings her hands. I am glad to see this penance, for, believe me, you have unripped a soul so foul and guilty, as I must tell you true, I marvel how the earth has borne you up. But weep, weep on. These tears may do you good. Weep faster yet, whilst I do read a lecture. Wretched creature. Ay, you are wretched. Miserably wretched. Almost condemned alive. There is a place, list, daughter, in a black and hollow vault, where day is never seen. There shines no sun, but flaming horror of consuming fires, a lightless sulphur, choked with smoky fogs of an infected darkness. In this place dwell many thousand thousand sundry sorts of never-dying deaths. There damned souls roar without pity. There are gluttons fed with toads and adders. There is burning oil poured down the drunkard's throat. The usurer is forced to sup whole draughts of molten gold. There is the murderer for ever stabbed, yet can he never die. There lies the wanton on racks of burning steel, whilst in his soul he feels the torment of his raging lust. Mercy! Oh, mercy! There stand these wretched things, who have dreamed out whole years in lawless sheets and secret incests, cursing one another. Then you will wish each kiss your brother gave had been a dagger's point. Then you shall hear how he will cry, Oh, would my wicked sister had first been damned when she did yield to lust. But soft. Methinks I see repentance work new motions in your heart. Say, how is't with you? Is there no way left to redeem my miseries? There is, despair not. Heaven is merciful, and offers grace even now. Tis thus agreed. First, for your honour's safety, that you marry my lord Saranzo. Next, to save your soul, leave off this life, and henceforth live to him. On oh, me! Sigh not. I know the baits of sin are hard to leave. Oh, tis a death to do it. Remember what must come. Are you content? <sighs> I am. I like it well. We'll take the time. Who's near us there? Enter Florio and Giovanni. Did you call, father? Is Lord Saranzo come? He stays below. Have you acquainted him at full? I have, and he is overjoyed. And so are we. Bid him come near. Aside. My sister's weeping. I fear this friar's falsehood. I will call him. Exit. Daughter, are you resolved? Father, I am. Re-enter Giovanni with Soranzo and Vasquez. My lord Soranzo, here, give me your hand. For that, I give you this. Joins their hands. Lady, say you so too? I do, and vow to live with you and yours. Timely resolved. My blessing rest on both. More to be done, you may perform it on the morning sun. Exeunt. Scene 7. The street before the monastery. Enter Grimaldi with his rapier drawn, and a dark lantern. Tis early night as yet, and yet too soon to finish such a work. 
Here I will lie to listen who comes next. He lies down. Enter Baghetto and Philotis disguised, and followed, at a distance, by Riccadetto and Poggio. We are almost at the place, I hope, sweetheart. I hear them near, and heard one say sweetheart. Tis he. Now guide my hand, some angry justice, home to his bosom. Now have it you, sir. Stabs Baghetto and exit. Oh, help, help. Here's a stitch fallen in my guts. Oh, for a flesh tailor, quickly. Poggio! What ails my love? I am sure I cannot piss forward and backward, and yet I am wet before and behind. Lights, lights, oh, lights. Alas, some villain here has slain my love. Oh, heaven forbid. Bid it. Raise up the neighbors instantly, Poggio, and bring lights. Exit Poggio. How is it, Bergetto? Slain? It cannot be. Are you sure you are hurt? Oh, my belly seethes like a porridge pot. Some cold water. I shall boil over else. My whole body is in a sweat, that you may wring my shirt. Feel here. Why, Poggio? Re-enter Poggio with officers and lights. Here, alas, how do you? Give me a light. What's here? Oh, blood. Oh, sirs, Signor Donado's nephew now is slain. Follow the murderer with all the haste up to the city. He cannot be far hence. Follow, I beseech you. Follow, follow, follow. Exeunt. Tear off thy linen, cuz, to stop his wounds. Be of good comfort, man. Is all this mine own blood? Nay, then good night with me. Poggio. Commend me to my uncle, dost hear? Bid him, for my sake, make much of this wench. Oh, I am going the wrong way, sure. My belly aches so. Oh, farewell, Poggio. Oh, oh. Dice. Oh, he is dead. How, dead? He's dead. Indeed. Tis now too late to weep. Let's have him home, and with what speed we may find out the murderer. Oh, my master, my master, my master! Exeunt. Scene 8. A room in Hippolyta's house. Enter Vasquez and Hippolyta. Betrothed? I saw it. And when's the marriage day? Some two days hence. Two days? days. Why, man, I would but wish two hours to send him to his last and lasting sleep. And, Vasquez, thou shalt see I'll do it bravely. I do not doubt your wisdom, nor, I trust, you my secrecy. I am infinitely yours. I will be thine in spite of my disgrace. So soon, a wicked man, I durst be sworn he'd laugh to see me weep. And that's a villainous fault in him. No, let him laugh. I am armed in my resolves. Be thou still true. I should get little by treachery against so hopeful a preferment as I am like to climb to. Even to my bosom, Vasquez. Let my youth revel in these new pleasures. If we thrive, he now hath but a pair of days to live. Exeunt. Scene 9. The street before the cardinal's gates. Enter Florio, Donado, Riccardetto, Poggio, and officers. Tis bootless now to show yourself a child, Signor Donado. What is done is done. Spend not the time in tears, but seek for justice. I must confess... Somewhat I was in fault, that had not first acquainted you 
what love passed twixt him and my niece but as i live his fortune grieves me as it were mine own alas poor creature he meant no man harm that i am sure of i believe that too but stay my masters are you sure you saw the murderer pass here and it please you sir we are sure we saw a ruffian with a naked weapon in his hand all bloody get into my lord cardinal's grace's gate that we are sure of but for fear of his grace bless us we durst go no farther know you what manner of man he was yes sure i know the man they say he is a soldier that he loved your daughter sir and please ye twas he for certain grimaldi on my life ay ay the same the cardinal is noble he no doubt will give true justice knock someone at the gate i'll knock sir knocks within what would ye we require speech with the lord cardinal about some present business pray inform his grace that we are here enter cardinal followed by grimaldi why how now friends what saucy mates are you that know nor duty nor civility are we a person fit to be your host or is our house become your common inn to beat our doors at pleasure what such haste is yours as that it cannot wait fit times are you the masters of this commonwealth and know no more discretion oh your news is here before you you have lost a nephew donardo last night by grimaldi slain is that your business well sir we have knowledge on t let that suffice in presence of your grace in thought i never meant burghetto harm but florio you can tell with how much scorn soranzo backed with his confederates hath often wronged me i to be revenged for that i could but win him else to fight had thought by way of ambush to have killed him but was unluckily therein mistook else he had felt what late burghetto did and though my fault to him were merely chance yet humbly i submit me to your grace kneeling to do with me as you please rise up grimaldi he rises you citizens of parma if you seek for justice know as nuncio from the pope for this offence i here receive grimaldi into his holiness's protection he is no common man but nobly born a prince's blood though you sir florio thought him too mean a husband for your daughter if more you seek for you must go to rome for he shall thither learn more wit for shame bury your dead away grimaldi leave em exeunt cardinal and grimaldi is this a churchman's voice dwells justice here justice is fled to heaven and comes no nearer Saranzo, was for him oh impudence had he the face to speak it and not blush come come donato there's no help in this when cardinals think murder's not amiss great men may do their wills we must obey but heaven will judge them for it another day Exeunt. end of act three